Hi, this is Steve Barton. We're back at Top Line Engineering. We're here with Mike. Uh, the last video we did, we showed you a little hard turn project that we're trying to help him uh, out with. And uh, we're at his computer station. And uh, Mike is going to explain. He's going to show uh, when uh, he was showing and holding the little part that we're turning. Uh, it was kind of hard to see what's really going on. So uh, he's got this pulled up on his computer over here. And uh, he can explain a little bit more detail what we're going to be doing. Alright, yeah. So, um, we use uh, Fusion 360. Um, love it don't have really any complaints about it. It's a great software. Um, so we got our model here. Um, this is kind of what it looks like blown up. Um, to give you an idea, it's a quarter inch um, overall diameter. Um, and what's going on here is uh, our customer is taking this right here and they're using this to locate. So the critical, one of the critical dimensions is from here all the way down to here. We got to maintain, I believe it's 94 thousandths. Um, as well as they're taking these pins and resistance welding them onto um, a stainless plate. And so this outer perimeter is what's actually getting welded. And they, they only want this welded. So all this in here is relief. Um, and so as, as far as the program goes, um, you know, got a simple uh, facing operation. I'm going to do some face profiling. It's going to get in there. And as you can see, the yellow is kind of the silhouette of what my part's going to look like when it's done. Um, so you'll see I got a 16 thou radius tool, um, CBN insert, and it'll come in just enough there to maintain um, that critical dimension right there. Um, and then as far as the uh, outside profiling, just you know, small step overs coming down. Um, leave myself a little bit here so I don't actually lose the part in the machine. Um, so it's going to get that whole contour. And then this last little bit is just cleaning that up down there. And what's going to happen is um, when the program's done, I'm going to have a tiny little stem. Um, and my part will still be hanging on to the bar stock. So I can just grab it off and away we go. Because uh, otherwise I'll be fishing for them for quite a while in, in the machine. Um, and yeah, that's the short and sweet of it. Uh, Steve's going to bring me over to our lead and uh, get me hooked up with getting my tools on center and hopefully improve uh, my accuracy and tool life. Before we go there, you mentioned that you got six parts without uh, the chip breaking, which is probably best you had so far, right? Yeah, yep. Okay, where where's the trouble that you're having? Is it uh, What profile is it that you're having the trouble with? Um, it was it was coming in right in here. Okay, so that's where we're having the trouble. Yep. Okay. And um, what kind of radius is that? A full 15 there? Because one of the things we might do is sweep that out, make a 20 thousandths radius, so that you don't get a pinch factor going on. There. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is I believe that's a 16 thou right there. Is what that that tool is showing me. Um, and yeah, we can and we can design. To give it more relief, you know, make it a nice, yeah, even the profile of our tool, um, as long as we maintain this 94 thou here between these two dimensions. Okay, well, let's go to the lathe and we'll look and see what you've done so far. All right, yeah. All right, here we are at uh, our Tormach 15L Slant Pro. Um, yeah, it's a lathe from Tormach, uh, pretty reasonably priced. It's done great work for us. Um, they kind of give you the bare bones, um, just the, the spindle and uh, the slant bed right there. Uh, we purchased the, the turret um, as well as blood coolant comes down in here. Um, and then we're also going to purchase uh, a 5C collet system, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, but here we are. This is uh, the raw stock. I just got it from McMaster to play around with um, M4 tool steel. So I was working on this job earlier this week, and uh, one of the problems I had was uh, my machines were jittery. Um, 
So being that uh, I just have a three jaw chuck, um, the, uh, the flats on here doesn't close in good enough um, for me to hold to hold on to the part well enough. Um, it's only making three points of contact in here. Um, and I noticed as I was machining that I could actually see this bar flex. And mind you, um, you know, this is, yeah, 65 Rockwell. Um, so rigidity was going to be a big issue for me. So uh, Steve uh, made me up one of these four-man collets. Um, took, uh, took the stock back to the shop, fitted it just nice in here. So the idea now is that I'm going to have full contact here on my rod. And I can still, with my free jaw, insert this in and pinch it down to get that to eliminate the rigidity. And I did notice um, I did run some parts just in the three jaw, and I think I busted an in, uh, my CBN insert um, after about two parts. Um, and then I threw this guy in there, and I was able to make six of them, no problem. And I stopped after six, and I could probably keep going, but. Um, yeah, no, it, it, it really made a difference. So now, um, I got a bunch of these to make, so we did get the uh, 5C collet um, add-on for this machine. Uh, it's about a thousand bucks, comes with a lever, a whole whole kit of uh, 5C collets, um, and that'll allow me to just pull it, lock it, and the machine. Um, so it'll go much smoother that way. Uh, now, some of you guys may be wondering, um, you know, I'm still still having three points of contact here with my four man's collet in, uh, but the idea here is that since uh, my points of contact now are further away from the center line of my spindle, um, it's going to be much harder to, to twist and move this collet around in my chuck, so that'll keep, keep my bar nice and straight. And that's something that you notice as well. You got what six parts when you use this versus two parts without, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yep. Hey guys, uh, we made we got some uh, we got our 5C collet in our machine, um, and I've made some programming changes to my part. And um, so one of the issues I was running into was uh, work holding rigidity. Um, you know, we had that poor man's collet. Um, it worked well for what it was doing, but uh, the 5C collet's going to be a much better solution for us, um, as well as uh, my cutter life wasn't wasn't that great. Um, and Steve pointed out uh, in the model here, if you can take a look, um, this was the original model. And right here is a, um, is a sharp corner, uh, 90 degree to be exact. And um, I have a 16th hour radius tool, so when the tool was coming in here, we're making contact on, on both edges of the tool, um, causing excessive wear, and that's where it was breaking. So went in, um, changed the model here, so here's the new one, um, and gave us a nice 20 thou radius in here so the tool can work on the tangent and and uh, hopefully improve the tool life. And so far, with the few parts I've ran, it's been doing pretty good. Um, one of the other issues I had with my original program was I was trying to do this whole profile and just leave myself a little bit down here to kind of hold on to. Um, but as that finishing pass is coming down here, um, my part's probably wobbling around, um, so that was another issue. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking multiple, stepping it down. So we'll do this, finish it, and then we'll do that, finish it, do that, finish it. And then when I get down to here, this, this little part is not, doesn't matter because it's going to come off on the grinder anyway. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's where I got to in the program. Um, posted it to the machine, and uh, let's go take a look. All right, so uh, just posted the program. Now we're back here at the lathe. Um, got our 5C collet system in here. Um, comes straight from Tormach, manual lever action. Um, it's going to allow us to get to 3,500 RPM, which is the max this machine will go. Um, and based on the manufacturing uh, manufacturer's recommendation for these CBN inserts um, and the diameter I'm turning at, I should be at around 6,500 RPM. Um, but given that I can only go 3,500, um, it'll have to work. Um, now, in order to get this machine changed over to 3,500 RPM, got to change the pulley um, down by the motor there, and it's somewhat of an involved process. 
Um, however, if you guys are familiar with uh, Rob Renzetti, you should check out his video. He has made himself a quick change pulley system down there. And he's timing himself doing it in 34 seconds, which is pretty sweet. Um, wish I had one too. Uh, however, so we're still at 2500 RPM right now, but for, for video purposes, it'll work just fine. Um, so without further ado, let's make some chips. Alright, the best part is I don't have a part catcher, so I've been playing around with how much stock to leave. And I left just enough so that it stays on there. It can pop it right off. Look at that, we're making a chip. Alright guys, here so you can uh, kind of see the part there. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's got a really nice mirror finish on it. Um, and you can see how free cut in it was by just the fact I could I could knock it off with my hand there at the end. Um, it's got a nice profile there. And yeah, so uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, before we go, um, got one more addition to our shop I want to show you guys. So uh, we bought a new toy to play with. Um, it's our Wart Jet uh, E1530 uh, water jet. Um, it's a 5 by it's 5 by 12 5 foot by 12 foot, but it'll fit a 4 by 8 sheet in here. Um, it's got uh, three, three axes, three axes, uh, but the third axis on the head's manual so you can adjust your taper or if you got some angle cuts you want to do. Um, and then right behind you too is the uh, 60,000 PSI intensifier pump. Um, yeah, boy, this thing's gonna be—it's gonna be a fun toy to play with. So, if you guys any ideas on what you want to see us cut in half, uh, let us know in the comments section, and we'll see what we can do.